Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Footy Travellers Podcast. Fellow footy travelers, footy fans, loyal listeners, we made it. Welcome to our 10th episode. Mike, double digits, what do you think? Who would have thought we were going to make it to 10? But it's only fitting. 10 is such a significant number in the footy world. And so this makes it a special episode. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm even more excited about it, probably for the topic at hand, a topic near and dear to my heart, mental health. Listeners, you may know the month of May as the month that hosts Mother's Day, which I hope you all did something special for your mom earlier this month. Shout out moms. Or if you're in the States, as the unofficial start to summer with Memorial Day at the end of the month. But were you aware that May is also Mental Health Awareness Month? That is right, Colin. And what better guests could we have to talk about footy and its role in mental health, than a few gentlemen from Sporting Serotonin, a team out of the Casa Soccer League, an amateur league that runs in Philadelphia, South Jersey, and the Boston areas. Now, before we formally introduce them, Mike, I just want to clear the air a bit before we get started. Oh, wow. This sounds, this sounds serious. Well, you've made a very valid point recently about our need to come back to center with the travel aspect of this podcast. We've been pushing the line towards the footy element, which is a very big part of this podcast. But I, as creative director, have to raise the flag and say travel is still inclusive. And we'll we'll include that for sure. I might also suggest the idea that we are traveling a bit in this episode, not necessarily through physical space, but time. <laughs> Oh, okay. That's a bit heady. Um, I I don't know if that's the uh, the Denver altitude that's kind of influencing this headiness that you have, but um, I'm going to give you the space to to speak about that. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, maybe it's the mile <laughs> the mile high air is a bit smoky. I'm not sure. No, so let me explain. I've been following Sporting Serotonin a bit lately on the socials, and was impressed with their approach to things. Uh, And as I looked more closely into them, I actually realized one of their members is a former player and student from my coaching and teaching days. Uh Ah, very, very small world. (laughs) So yeah, little, little small world moment, little blast from the past, travel through time, whatever you want to call it. Speaking of those days from the past, by the way, shout out to St. Augustine Prep in Richland, New Jersey. There you go. You got to rep the alma mater. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's welcome to the pod from Sporting Serotonin, Jack Brumel, Justin Fisher, and Paul Catrino. Gentlemen, welcome to the Footy Travelers Podcast. Thanks for having us, man. Hey, hey. What's going on? So, I just have to say at the top, Jack, great to see you after all these years and reconnect through footy. Even when, uh, you know, it's not inducing me to physically travel. Apparently, the sport is taking me down a, a little trip down memory lane. So I'm excited to hear what you guys are up to with this team that you have. Yeah, man. Who knew uh, 10 years later, you'd be reconnecting me, with me over uh, over soccer. The, the the kid who could barely kick the ball somehow made the team was, you were dealing with me. <laughs> you're, pers- you're, per- you're persistent and you're still out there. I love it. <laughs> so we're here to explore the blend between soccer and mental health that you've discovered and have been promoting. But first things first, tell us how this team came together. Where did you guys get your start? Uh, well, a lot of it was actually uh, me and Justin here. We were uh, talking over the uh, span of quarantine and just we really had the idea of, you know, we want to get together a good group of guys who really just want to go out and have fun and play. We always knew soccer was good for us. Like, it's just when you get in your later adult years, you know, it's like the pressure of these amateur soccer games like everything's getting all heightened up and it's like man i work for a mortgage company i am not a soccer player (laughs) i am just a guy who shows up here on weekends and these clubs want to be like the next big club of a city 
you know, like they want to make an impact in that regard. And I just feel like that's so hard to do, especially in Philadelphia, because there's just so many teams. They're really, I mean, Casa Soccer League is one of the biggest amateur soccer leagues in the country based on just their pyramid system alone. There's seven divisions now about to be up to eight. Wow. So when we were like really talking, we wanted to focus on like really not hone in on finding like, you know, the best players we can and trying to like steal them from other teams. Let's find good dudes who just want to play and show up and have fun. Yeah, Paul and I had been on various other teams and and had mixed reviews and kind of like Paul was saying, some people taking it way too seriously and some people not taking it serious enough. So we wanted to kind of have that happy medium between wanting to, and obviously wanting competition, but do it where we're obviously not professionals. So if you make a bad pass, you're not going to get yelled at if you you know, if you get tired and feel like you can't track back, like you're not going to get yelled at. And then Paul had the idea of like, you know, we should pair this with something that is not just about soccer and bringing in the mental health aspect. We could, you know, make this way bigger than just soccer. We could make it, you know, I'm sure, you know, we're obviously going to talk about the larger goal of mental health and, you know, talking about what, what would benefit us and what is, you know, kind of an unmet need per se. And maybe that's a bad word for it in just the soccer community of mental health as a whole. It's not as much of a need. It's something that should really just be at the forefront of this game as a whole, because why did you do it when you were growing up as a kid? It was something to do together with people outside and it was fun to run around, right? It's like, it, it just perspective changes over time. And it's like, it gets so elevated as you're getting older and older and older, like if you're playing in high school, playing in college, you might play pro and stuff. And what happens after that? Like what happens when like that passes you by? Like you can treat soccer in a different light and it can be really positive for you if you find a good people who want to play for the right reasons. I love that. And so the name itself, the Sporting Serotonin name, tell us about that. Where did it come from? How did, how did it come together? Uh, so like it was, again, me and Justin going back and forth, uh, obviously, um, we want to do something unique, but we also didn't want to be like, we didn't want to be geolocked because the whole idea behind our club is that it's not just a Philadelphia thing. It's not just a, this is our group of guys in this area. And like, this thing is only for us. It's not, I mean, it's going to start here and this is where it's going to be born, but like, serotonin should be for everyone anyone can achieve like the neurotransmitter and get that from serotonin itself any day so sporting serotonin was just kind of like i shot it over to justin i was like hear me out on this so justin what was the selling point for you then on on paul's pitch i don't know when he first we were pitching around a bunch of different names and then he said sporting serotonin and i i like said it out loud I think we got him got him frozen. Justin, are you there? Let's just say I was real I was real suave <laughs> with my approach. You know, well, well, I sent it over to Justin and he was speechless. Just like he is right now. He he literally couldn't move. He was just so frozen. He was like that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. I in my head. Uh, in my in my mentally ill mind, that's how it played out. But no, like we <laughs> We worked it out. We we really did. And once, you know, we started designing the logo and really bringing things together from like a creative standpoint, it was just like, oh, wow, this is, this is cool. I, I really like where we're going with this. I, and then when developing the team, it was kind of like we were just telling them, hey, we have this soccer team that we're getting together. And it's like, yeah, I'm interested. Okay. And then you tell them the name and they're like, Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I rock with that for sure. So this, this is in no way a science podcast, uh, very far from it, but little crash course in serotonin. Can you guys explain maybe the difference between that and dopamine? Um, similar, very different, you know, how, how much similar or different are they? Yeah. So it's one of the, um, more prominent neurotransmitters, uh, and basically, its biological function is just to help regulate mood, cognition, learning, a lot of those like really subtle things that happen in the body when something positive happens. It is a uh, – sorry, I'm suffering from COVID, guys. <laughs> all good, uh, all good. I'm also not a scientist, 
but I <laughs> I know when serotonin hits me. I really do. You feel it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is a feeling. And when you get that from soccer with guys who are also buying into what you're buying into, it just makes it even better to share that. It's, it's interesting you say that it's a feeling too, which is kind of maybe why I connected with the name too, because I feel like we've talked to people in the past and I feel like I've probably mentioned it as well, which is like just the simplifying the idea of like soccer is kind of a feeling. The sport itself can sometimes just be a feeling. It's not an event. It's not a culture, but it's just like, this is what gets me up. Like, this is what, you know, I wake up early for, or I go, you know, run like crazy in the summer heat for or whatever it is. It's like that feeling that you get. And so I think when I saw the name, I was just like, oh, that is genius. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it's so fitting. And then, and then obviously knowing that it's, you know, what it ties back to in terms of your mission, it makes total sense. And I think it, it's, I'm like, I wish that I thought of that before. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it's like I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I got there first. <laughs> 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 we, we got the trademark in and everything, right? It's patented by us. Well, no, 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 no. But um, it, it's very early on in the process, and I didn't even realize that I would have to do these things. You know, I, at its core, you know, we really just wanted something unifying to bring us all under together. But since we started like selling the jerseys, and people have learned about our mission and like how we want to promote like good mental health throughout the sport, it's snowballing. And now I have to worry about these LLC things and like trademarks, <laughs> and I was like. I'll get there. I'll get there for sure. You mentioned the phrase buy-in. So I want to ask you, and maybe Jack, I'll shoot this one your way. What would you say the buy-in or the reception of such an outspoken message coming from an amateur soccer team has been? Yeah, it's definitely been uh, interesting. I think it's been well-received, right? I look at some of the responses on uh, you know, Twitter and Instagram of stuff, of the stuff that Paul's been doing a great job of like spreading that on social media. And it's it's been super uh, receptive. Like you you saw uh, sporting serotonin from Sam's Army, right? You saw that, and we even had Fang, who's the mascot of the Philadelphia Union, hang up or, or hold yeah uh, a jersey, you know, with his name on it, and I think double zero with the number. And um, so I mean, it, it's it's been grabbed onto and just kind of run with of people who are within the soccer community, especially uh, within some parts of Philadelphia. And as you can see, that's, you know, gone out to, to your guys to further west as well. Um, and I'm sure that there's probably some type of question of like, you know, why is the seventh league or seventh division team like trying to be big? Like, why why is it that, you know, I'm in the fifth division and we don't have social media presence, but here's the seventh division team, you know, getting retweeted by Sam's Army, why is it a jersey? But uh, I mean, for the most part, it, 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 it's been positive. And I, and I think when you explain and talk about that, like, what is our purpose? Why are we spreading it, right? Just like, we're like, hey, man, we're here to, to have fun, like, promote friendship, like, be there for each other. Like, yeah, we're on separate teams, but at the end of the day, we're all going home and, and fighting something, you know? You're trying to keep yourself mentally stable, doing routines, going through whatever you have in life, and going back to that 9 to 5 on Monday. So, you know, we're trying to promote that. We can walk a, walk away after the game ends, shake hands, have a beer, and and... I think that, especially that end part, have a beer after the game is really what sends it home for <laughs> for some people. They're like, you know what? I could hang out with those guys. That sounds like a good time. <laughs> I think the funniest thing about the season so far has been the reception of our opponents. Because, what is it? We just, uh, uh, Jack, I just did a uh, podcast with the people from NAMI, uh, the National Alliance yeah. for Mental Illness in Philadelphia. And they had uh, one of the girls from Falcons who played against us a couple weeks ago. And she's like, I wanted to hate you guys. I wanted to hate you guys. But I just couldn't. Like, the way you guys were talking on the field. We're too lovable. The way you were, like, communicating on the field. The way you tried to, like, diffuse situations. The way, like, it's all constructive. So, like, that's been really fun to see. Like, our opponents after the game were just like, yeah, we just clawed back and drew you guys. But we didn't do it because we don't like you. We are doing it because we're out here playing a game. Now, like, come over. Bring it in. You want to drink? We brought plenty of them. Yeah, and, and like Mike said, like uh, I thought he gave a kind of a good description of it. it. Was like soccer being a feeling, right? Like you can't. I mean, maybe there's people out there that do, but like when I think of our game or even like Philadelphia Union, right? There's excitement to wake up, right? You're getting excited. You're putting your jersey on. You're like maybe nervous. You're talking tactics, but like you're 
in some emotional state going towards the game in the game post game all those things and it's like if we as a team can at least make our definitely our post game is what we can control the most right and during the game is what we can control but eventually to the point where when people know that they're playing us they know that it's in for a time in which people want to be relational and want to talk and and you know be more than just your opponent type thing and you know, if we can have people excited to play us, then you would hope that that changes their team too, right? If, you know, she from the Falcons saw what we did and, you know, maybe next week she turns around and does that towards somebody else. And it's like, that's a reach that isn't a part of us, but maybe we help start. One thing that uh, you mentioned that I'm, I think is really interesting is when you were talking about how you're developing this presence and you're, you're growing the awareness of the club and it's not for the f- the sake of competition necessarily, but it's for the sake of raising awareness. And so I wanted to kind of ask you, what are your thoughts on sports as it evolves in, in the sports world itself being used more as a vessel to deliver awareness on mental health with athletes like Naomi Osaka or Simone Biles really actually bringing it out and calling it out and bringing it to the forefront? Like that's what you all are trying to do as well. So I kind of I guess the question is twofold. What are your thoughts on that? And do you see any other athletes that you're sort of seeing that are actually carrying that flag? It's been nice to see it happening across professional sports because it's every person, you know, I think one of the core things of our club is we care about the person, not the player. We're all just people out here trying to do our own thing and get through every single day. Like every single one of these professional athletes are just people going through struggles in their own right, no matter how much money they make, no matter how much fame they have. And it's clearly affecting people enough for just a few of them to come out and speak. But now it it seems to be more and more on the forefront of, as unfortunate as it is in Philly, we've got Ben Simmons we've just had to deal with for a year. And that whole stigma around, was he really seeking mental health, like help? Was he, was this really the cause of his stress? Either way, that guy is still a person. And I am sure that his mental health is not in a great place with all that he had to go through as a professional athlete. Imagine if that stigma was not a thing around mental health and he was really able to approach, you know, his last 10, his last few months in Philadelphia in a much different way instead of having to sell it as maybe back soreness or something along those lines. You know, it's, it really is nice to see that mental health is not looked as as weakness in sports, but rather transparency, you know, because it's health, it's health. You need a doctor to take care of it. You sometimes need medication to take care of it. It's health. It needs to be addressed and taken care of. And we all have it. We all have brains. We all have hormones. We all have neurotransmitters exactly. in our body. We all have bodies. Yeah. It's just a part of our body. Yes. <laughs> you said this wasn't a science podcast, but that was very scientific. It's part of our body because we all have bodies. Because <laughs> we all have bodies. <laughs> Astute observation there. <laughs> the answer is in the question itself. Wow. The more you know. Hey everyone, we hope you're loving the show. If you are, we'd love it if you showed us your love. Here's a couple simple ways to do that. Be sure to hit subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to this episode. Even better, send this episode to a friend and tell them to listen as well. If you happen to be listening on Apple Podcasts, we'd love it if you'd leave us a star rating and write a review for us. It's a great way to help others discover our show. Finally, engage with us on Instagram. Follow, like, tag, or DM the Footy Travelers handle, at Footy Travelers. As always, if you want more info on anything you hear about in our episodes, check out the show notes, or reach out to us through the contact page on FiperMedia.com. All right, back to the show. So it sounds like you guys are becoming infectious in a good way. You know, these other teams and clubs are seeing you and, you know, singing your praises, getting to know you, uh, wanting to hang out and share a few beers after games. What advice would you give to others in other cities that maybe are interested in doing what you're doing? 
Yeah. Uh, you know, I wasn't there for the, the Paul Justin COVID uh, 2020 talks. Uh, you know, I joined uh, after through, I guess, Mutual, because like one of our buddies, Matt, wrote for Brotherly Game, and that's how he knew you, right, Paul? And, you know, since being a part of it, it was exciting. I came in not knowing 95% of the team or, you know, the guys in the group chat, just me and my buddy, Zach. And uh, just the way and the culture that stemmed from the person who started it, uh, you know, which was Paul and then even just some of the other guys like like Justin, like John, uh, like Matt, like some of the other leaders, Rob on the team. It was almost like the first question was like, hey, like, Jack, how are you? Like, what you know, what's your story? Who are you? It necessarily wasn't like, hey, are you right or left footed? Hey, are, are you like, do you want to be center mid? Do you want to be striker or guard? Can you play goalie? Like it, it very much was a personal experience in which like I felt built up and almost included and like I was a part of a team like right away, regardless of how well I kicked a soccer ball and, you know, got added to that even before they saw that. And and one of the biggest things I think that Paul's done uh, extremely well is just like our social media presence. I mean, it, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about gassing people up. We're talking about encouraging people, telling them to get out. And I mean, what makes you more excited than seeing uh, your face on like a game day poster, you know, as you wake up and get ready to go to the game. And you know, it's kind of just like we're a team that's just constantly building each other up. And that's almost through different foundation structures that we've kind of established and just routines that we have in how we run the team. And so if, if you're in, you know, Nashville, New York, Boston, whatever, and you're, you're thinking of starting a team, almost think of ways in which you can build up every single member of your team through your daily, weekly routines of, of just being a team, you know, and, you know, there's always going to be elements that we want to win. You know, you do want people who can uh, understand some, you know, the basic rules of soccer, know what all sides is, and, you know, you know, you can't touch it with your hand. Of course, there's going to be some basic level of stuff, but you, you really just want to talk to people. <laughs> I, I haven't gotten there yet, but Paul still keeps me around, you know. So visual cue for the people listening home. Huh? Well, you don't have to know too much about soccer. You show. Yeah. yeah but but, uh, you can learn the hands rule very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, for the advice for people who are looking to build culture like ours you really don't have to overthink it you if you think of people as people instead of players and you check in on them you make sure that the way you're approaching like if you want them to try something new as a player it's constructive it's from a place of i think you would really benefit from this the whole thing is just making sure people feel welcome and included and the communication is effective and so far that really has established huge camaraderie among people that, like I said, like Jack said months ago, I had never met Jack. Now, now he's, he's bro beans, man. I, I love his beard. <laughs> I, I love that guy for real. Bro beans. <laughs> he is bro beans, man. <laughs> All the people at home listening, I am in the peak of my COVID right now. I may be a little delirious, but I am not delirious in saying that I love Jack Brumel. I love what he's brought <laughs> to this team. And I honestly, every guy on this team right now has brought something to serotonin and yeah. it's, it's really just nice to see. And I, and like, I love that, especially because you've already kind of said it, but we'll repeat it because it's worth mentioning again. Like your goal is to acknowledge the person first rather than the player. And like you even said, like, I love all the guys on this team. It's not like I love all the players on this team, right? Like I love all those guys. And so yeah. with that being said, speaking of goals, what do you think is the end goal here? Like, is there an end goal? <sighs> I retire on a beach. <laughs> when i'm margarita in hand <laughs> no for for this i mean there's gonna come a time where me and jack are no longer able to lace up and go out there and run as hard as we do and at that point i just hope serotonin is something that people want to join and be a part of just because they know what goods they can get out of the experience people who don't see soccer as their future can at least find a healthy place for them to appreciate soccer, to play soccer, to be immersed in soccer and have it be holistically positive. With serotonin, it doesn't just have to be one team. You know, serotonin can pop up wherever it needs to, you know? So if that's 
if that's the way forward, so be it. But everything so far has just been so foundational and trying to just find the best way to build this layer. And then as a team, we move forward and higher up. It's so hard to see an end goal right now because I'm just loving the beginning and everything that's come from it. I love I'm that. Not crying. Living I'm, in the moment. I'm not crying. I'm holding back the cough. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Even if you are, just let it, it out. Yeah, just just say, let, let it out. <laughs> let it out. Dead. You know, as you, <laughs> as you, um, as you're continuing to evolve the 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 community that you've been building, as you mentioned, foundationally, I think oftentimes we believe that an end goal is the way to uh, attribute success, and. End goals aren't necessarily always required, especially when it comes to mental health, right? Your mental health and your mental status changes all the Mm -hmm. time. So it's a continuous journey. So I think it only seems natural for the fact that serotonin will continue to just sort of evolve into how it needs to evolve. But I think to what you discovered in the beginning, which was like, there's a large absence of these types of groups in the community that it's going to be able to pop up wherever organically because there's just the need. And so the end goal doesn't necessarily need to have a firm date or a firm, you know, destination, but neither does your mental health journey. Yeah. And I'd say, I'd say end goal or no end goal. You put anything as far as a target in front of Jack Brumel, he's going to run after it. So (laughs) (laughs) with him on your side, success is inevitable. That's still somehow, somehow like, one of my strengths. All right, just keep running. Just keep going. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of strengths, uh, let, let's pivot a little bit, but I'm going to say this is a strength of your guys. You know, what I've gathered about your team, you don't all passively just say, hey, look at us. Mental health is important. You know, you're pretty active on social media. Uh, you know, that's how I kind of discovered you guys, as we mentioned already. You have different calls to action within that. It's not just reporting scores or, again, caring about the game or the players or stats. One of the things I've seen is your kit and your quote unquote shirt sponsor. I don't know if it's a shirt sponsor, but it's right there in the middle where shirt sponsors tend to go, but it's a phone number. Tell me about that. Uh, That was, that was fun. So uh, I have done a lot of designing with uh, Robbie Smuckler from uh, Icarus FC. They're a Philadelphia based company. Uh, they really love to bring style to uh, the kits that they make. So when I uh, started building the foundation for this club, it's like hell yeah, I get to design jerseys. This is sweet. The initial uh, the initial home kit, we were playing around with some patterns, and the hexagon in our logo was very prominent when we were designing it. So that uh, that really was the forefront of the actual home kit. And then we were looking for sponsors. And of course, we don't have anything to really sell. We're just starting out. We're a club that didn't exist a couple of months ago. So it's a bit of a hard business sell. But um, I believe it was uh, I believe it was Zach, Jack, yeah. who uh, was like, you know, why don't we uh, why don't we just put like, you know, something like let's talk or, you know, like you could talk to us saying or we could do uh, the suicide prevention line. I went, wait. There it is. That's fantastic. <laughs> Let's see if that works with certain tones. And from there, it was just like, boom, this, yeah. this has to be the way forward because we've all, we've all been through at some stage in our life, we've been affected by someone who has unfortunately left us because of suicide. And it's so prevalent in this country. And there was just n- nothing hit me harder than being able to see that on a soccer kit and be like, there are people who support this notion that you can seek help it's right here just like call this and you have help whether it's your first step in getting better or the last resort that you want to reach out to it hit us too hard to not do that in the future we might partner up with like certain organizations that really you know they want to help us with promoting mental health and you know donating to good organizations and stuff but once we had that initial idea and we got calls afterwards it was like nah no, nah, this this is the way. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, it it means too much to too many people in this club. And it gets people talking because they ask what the phone number is. They're like, what is yeah. that? Is that your phone number? It's like, no, you won't get me. You'll get someone who will help Far you. More qualified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it sounds like it it's stylistic just enough to grab the visual attention, but ambiguous enough to leave uh, some questions needing to be asked. And that starts a conversation. Yeah, I mean, it feels like at least once a game we get uh, like, like so at least I hear whether it's to me or one, one of our teammates, somebody just asking like, what number is that? Like, why is that on there? And like Paul said, it's, you know, it, you know, where the expectation is and somebody's going to see it and then after the game go and, and, and use it. If they do, that's great. And we're glad, but it could be something just down the road, like a few years. And it's just like, hey, that number actually exists. I didn't know it existed till I played this team and they had it on and I asked why. And then, you know, here it is an example of somebody just knowing about it. Right. I'm sure they then have to Google it. I doubt anybody memorizes, but just the fact that people look at our jersey and be like, oh, there is a number for that in case I ever need that. Or, hey, my friend needs that. Here's the number for them type thing. It is It is nice to get asked after games and stuff like that. Like Jack said, people ask what it's about. And we're just more than happy to oblige because all of these, everyone's mental health journey begins with a conversation with someone. Totally. I, I, I love that. I, I always say that um, soccer jerseys are a conversation starter. And I think they're typically a conversation starter just because of, you know, whether it's the club or the player or the design or the style, rarely is it the sponsor that's being brought up. But I think, I think it's almost really it's impressive to be able to kind of take the structure of like a kit and say, we're going to find a way to have it be a conversation starter for even the better, the greater good of not just for the conversation, but to open that door. Like that question of asking what that phone number is, is accomplishing a lot. Like that is that first step for a lot of people to be like, Oh, that, makes a lot of sense and they can it's always going to be memorable right there's always an element that they can kind of resort to and be like oh yeah that club that we played three years ago had a number and i can you know they can recall that rather than to your point jack like no one's memorizing that phone number but the more visibility of it the the better it is and you know that is like you're accomplishing that very beautifully and Mm -hmm. i think not only is the kit awesome as I mentioned in the design of it, but the, um, the function of it. No such thing as fashion over function there. It's, it's equally <laughs> both. <laughs> I will, uh, I'll take that. I, I will take that. Any day. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> A lot of credit to uh, Robbie over there too at Icarus FC. He's going to so be our, I w- he's going to be our kid sponsor for life, man. Cause that dude's on board with mental health as well. He really is. This is great. Shout out to Robbie. Yeah. Icarus FC, man. They do outstanding work that's great so um one kind of um transition to a, another larger question before we go into some rapid fires Ooh. um <laughs> uh as the the lone person on this call that has never lived in the philadelphia area but philadelphia does have a bit of a reputation for being a tough place to play uh sports specifically most likely professional sports but i also know that there's uh you know a lot of competition there but you know away teams that come into the city players fans you know people that play for philly teams they have felt the pressure i think that's a conversation that has been had for a long time and and you brought up ben simmons and being a good example of one in terms of mental health itself how much of that energy or or vibe would you say you all deal with like being in Philadelphia itself? Or is it really just like an unspoken thing? Or is it hard to even like separate it from it because you live in Philadelphia and maybe my outsider's perspective is different. And so I, it, I'm just interested in that. I was gonna say it's one of those things that's probably hard for us to say because we're like in the midst of it. Because I, I understand that if I look at certain situations within sports, right? And like you said, there's testimonies from athletes of coming in and like saying like Philly was hard to play in front of or like I really enjoyed Philly because it was funny to see how mad everybody got type thing. <laughs> and it's there. But like, you know, when we show up and we play at our South Philadelphia site, you know, we're all Philly people. And so, you know, at the end of the day, you're not getting ripped on because you're from L.A., Dallas, you know, D.C. Mm-hmm. type thing. And so it, it's it's awesome because it's kind of like an underlying thing of like, we're all Philly people, even the union singing, right. You know, they hate us. We're, you know, we're from Philly, freaking Philly. Uh, no one likes us. We don't care type thing. And, and it's, 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 it's in our culture. I I mean, I even have a mug that says bad things happen in Philadelphia. The infamous quote. Uh, I mean, my favorite story of all time about Philadelphia 
is the hiker bot. And now I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but <laughs> um, what what they did is that these two Canadian uh, scientists, engineers, whatever, made this bot that um, would take photos every second. And then it, it, would, it would give instructions to have people transport it. It went through like Netherlands, Germany, England, and then it started its tour in the United States and uh, it went from Boston to New York and made its way through Philadelphia. And that's where it stopped because an old city was destroyed and vandalized and it never made it out of Philly. There's a lot wrong with us, but boy, do I love us because I feel like I'm one of them. And so I'm sure there's something that we have to tackle. And it's like, I often don't think about it. And it probably, I would say, is is hard for me to see that that maybe is something we need to combat in a sense, just because it's almost like we're in it. But then also we're in it and we treat ourselves with respect because we're all from Philadelphia slash South Jersey type thing. I actually think about it quite a bit, Jack. Um, I I really do because both of my parents are like born in Northeast Philly, you know, like Mm. it's, it's so ingrained in my culture and in like where I grew up my whole life. And I'm used to dealing with all kinds of people around the city. (laughs) I will, I will agree with Jack that our soccer community is way more like accepting and open than people will most likely give it credit for. But like, there are these conversations that I do have that people are like, why the hell should I even care about that? Like, man, like that's stupid. Like what you're talking about is stupid. Just go out and win. Just go out and like play, like shut up about this stuff. And my response is like, oh, you don't want to have good mental health. I treat it, ba- I give it back equally, like in the Philadelphia tone, but with a positive message behind it. And it's like, oh, wow, you don't want to be mentally stable and like take care of yourself and just worry about these dumb things happening at a bar maybe after the game. <laughs> uh, what's wrong with you, guy? Like, fi- like Philly lifts the stakes of everything. Everything that we do here is just elevated because everyone wants to have an opinion on it. Everyone wants to have their loud opinion on it and really let you know what they think. And I like that because we've had a lot of people come up to us and say that it's really good. We have yet to have someone come up to us and say they hate this. No one's like outwardly come out and have just trashed mental health in general. But the whole thing that like we're all from Philly and embrace that as well is nice to have because we do have a bunch of tough guys on the team. Like we do have like dudes that are Philly tough. Like, you know, they were bred here, born here. It's it's definitely part of the culture, but we're just taking such a different approach to the whole we want to be Philly's team. No, we're just, we're here for the vibes. We're here for the vibes. We're here to play. We're here to be healthy. And the day we can't do it anymore, we'll be lifting up someone who's able to play and carry on that legacy. And it's nice. It's nice to be Philly tough about mental health. That's a nice tagline. The irony there is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We don't need to lose that that Philliness, but we definitely need to direct it in a way that's a little bit more productive to society. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So let me take us there in that direction, you know, turning that energy or that vibe of Philly towards that productive output of promoting mental health. This is for both of you, uh, Paul and Jack, and this will be a great little lead in uh, for a rapid fire round. But real quick, top of your head, what would you say your favorite tip or trick for mental health for yourself is before a game? Ah, man. Uh before, I mean, it depends on what time, right? If it's if it's our eight a.m. games, like I just, it's a success if I'm up on time, you know, and I count that as a, <laughs> as a win. Amen. Um, Be grateful for what you have. Yeah, exactly. Tip number one. <laughs> um, I mean, I like what gets me going is, I mean, it also helps that uh, I got one of my good friends flocked in, in, in into the team, and I got my brother Tom on, and so it's just like two people I love and care about are coming over to my house and we're all driving in a car to go play soccer uh, for 90 minutes. And sometimes that's just kind of like what, what gets me going and gets me excited to get out and, and to the game. So just kind of knowing, knowing that is kind of, I guess really just my morning of, of excitement routine, you know, whatever it might be. I do enjoy my lattes in the morning as well. No doubt about that. But yeah, I mean, that, that's probably it for me. <laughs> Paul, how about you? From a mental health perspective, I would say uh, breathing is essential. Before games, I usually do some uh, four, four, four breathing, which is four seconds in, four seconds hold, four seconds out. Square breathing, they call that, right? Yeah, yeah, it really does help uh, stabilize the body and uh, make you just a little more like get looser. You know, it's not all just tightness before a game, like pressure and everything. It's just 
Now get yourself to the level that you need where physically you can step on the field and you can play as hard as you are physically able to. We like to find as many tips and tricks for people as we can and make it available uh, through links on our link tree or on our Instagram page so that, you know, when people do find us, they're able to get more out of it than just where they can order our stuff. You know, it's like, where are the best mental health resources in the city? Uh, Where's a national database that people can go to for specific mental illnesses that they might be dealing with? Um, Daily affirmations of just like, hey, don't forget that this is a long journey, man. You can't turn your life around in one day, but you can at least turn in the other direction and start walking that way. Like just little things to remind people to check in on themselves. And I remind my guys all the time, you got to keep checking in on yourself. This is not something that you need to be worrying about every single day. In regards to the team, that is, you know, like, I don't care if we have a playoff game in four days. Like, what's up with you? How are things at home? And sometimes people aren't willing to do that themselves. So it's nice to have people who are on your team and in your community who at least care about that more than you do. And maybe eventually you'll get to that place where you want to start caring about that more yourself. I like that. So you you mentioned uh, Linktree and, and sending out some some tips and, and some content online. So let's tell everyone, uh, tell the folks that are listening to the pod, um, where can they connect with you guys and learn more about what's going on with with Footy and mental health? Yes. Yeah, so um, our Instagram is uh, at Sporting Serotonin. We have a lot of uh, highlights underneath our bio there that we have some links to old games and also like all the tips and tricks before games and daily affirmations and whatnot. Our link tree is there for links to other databases and resources for mental health around the country. Uh, And then we're also on Twitter at serotonin soccer sporting serotonin would not fit on the Twitter database. Maybe (laughs) Elon will change that. We'll see. Come on, Musk. (laughs) Yeah. Step it up, man. Well, gentlemen, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was great to talk about footy, but also our mental health. Because once again, it's part of our body and we all got bodies, right? <laughs> yes. yes. The most scientific thing you'll take from this podcast is mental health is in bodies and we all have bodies. So take care of your body. <laughs> Listeners, if you want to check out Sporting Serotonin, you can catch them on Instagram, Twitter. Check out Icarus FC as well. They're Jersey manufacturers and designers. And I don't know if we explicitly laid it out for everyone, but that suicide prevention hotline number, if you or someone you know needs to call that number, reach out for support. That's 1-800-273-8255. Jack, Paul, and always Mike. Thanks for being here, guys. We uh, we lost Justin along the way, it sounds like. Yeah. but uh, <laughs> Yes, he did uh, want to say, I was, he's so sorry that his computer crashed out. 10 minutes in never happened before i really like these guys i feel so bad (laughs) so now we're gonna have to build him up and make sure that he's all good for this (laughs) so you might be saying right about now where's that rapid fire round of questions you guys were talking about don't worry fellow footy travelers we'll be releasing that part of our conversation with the philly boys in due time You'll hear their insights on their favorite ways to laugh, their happiest footy moments, and of course, their personal takes on the best things Philadelphia has to offer later this month. But if you really can't wait to hear it, or you want to help us and Sporting Serotonin promote mental health awareness, we'll make you a sweet deal. Head over to Instagram and make sure you're following both the Footy Travelers podcast and the Sporting Serotonin accounts. And then smash that like on our joint post announcing the release of this latest episode. If you do, we'll send you an exclusive link to listen to the second half of the conversation before it's released to the general public. I mean, you do want to promote mental health, don't you? The Footy Travelers podcast is a production of Fiper Media. To learn more about their other work, visit FiperMedia.com. That's F-Y-P-E-R media.com. Our episodes are edited by me, Colin Martin. Mike Tyrone is our creative director. Cover art is by Felix Palau. Theme music comes from Shumatar, with additional music from Mr. Mastermind. 
Our incredible intro voice is Helen My Marks. You can keep up with all things footy travel by following us on Instagram at footy travelers. We'll see you next time.